so uh, I'm Lucy. Um, I am 25 and I competed in the Tokyo Olympics. Um, it's been like a goal of mine since I was really young, um, even before I did judo, actually. I knew I wanted to compete in the Olympics at an event because I did gymnastics and athletics. Um, and then when I started judo, I knew straight away it was judo that I wanted to compete in. And I was really sporty when I was young. I did a lot of events just like you're doing. I did the Merseyside Youth Games. And I think I just went up the ladder step by step and I trained very hard. And yeah, this then I got to the Olympic Games. So do, do you have any questions? Um, how did you feel when you got selected for like the Olympics? I was so happy. So I knew about two months before we had the World Championships and it was out of me and another girl in my weight category that was going to be going. Um, at the time, I was a few points ahead of her. Um, so if she medaled at the World Championships or did like super good, then she would overtake me. So I knew I had to perform well at the Worlds um, to go see Olympics. And at the Worlds, um, the girl lost first fight. So straight away, I knew that I was going to be going to the Olympics. So it was it was so happy, like literally a dream come true. So, yeah, I was I was made up. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, my name's Shauna. Um, and I started triathlon when I was about nine and I'm nearly 16 now. So, yeah. And um, when I started, I was doing the TriStar series, which was like for the youngsters. And I was doing that up until uh, last year, I think, actually. And then I moved into the Super Series then which was like for youth events. And that was when I got selected then for the Welsh team for the school games. Wow. So I was really happy. I was like, whoa, really? I'm going here. <laughs> oh, yeah. when did you get your selection for the games? Um, About a month ago. Yeah. Yeah. Through, and then through email. Yeah, it was through email. And I, I didn't know what it was at th first. <laughs> I've never heard of it. And I was like, what's this? And then I like researched it and looked it all up. And I was like, this is actually quite big. Whoa, this very is very cool. big. Yeah. yeah. So I was like, whoa. Are you excited or nervous or both? Both, definitely. <laughs> I'm like, I feel like a nervous, like, oh, how is it going to go? Is it going to yeah. be really fun? But then I'm like excited for the fun parts of it as well, like doing racing, which I love. And just yeah. Getting that, that's a big thing that I think you need to remember is it's a huge, it's a big competition, maybe the biggest you've done but you love doing triathlon. So yeah. you're just going to go out there and have fun. And if you have fun, then that's all that matters. And if, a, if you get a medal, even better. But like, you've just got to go and enjoy the experience and like, really like take everything in. And maybe one day you'll be at the Olympics too. Um, but you've had that experience of a games type thing. Definitely, that would be amazing. I think that is my like long-term goal. Is yeah. to try and go all the way in triathlon. So yeah. just work little steps first and get up to it. Mm -hmm. I got a long way to go yet. Yeah, but you'll get there. I'm sure you'll get there. <laughs> so how did the pandemic affect your training? So for judo, uh, you really need, even though it's an individual sport, like when I go and compete, it's just me fighting against my opponent. But it's really important for judo that you have training partners, like sparring partners, because you need to practice with different people um, to try your throws and stuff like that. So when the pandemic hit, actually hit, it was super tough. Um, all competitions started to get cancelled. We couldn't travel. And then when it was the lockdown, um, we had to do sessions through Zoom. So just like this. And our coach would be on the other side just running a session. But it was more like um, conditioning sessions. And we got a bit of equipment sent out to us. We was lucky to get that. So I had a few weights and stuff. So I did a little bit of weights, a little bit of conditioning. And we just had to keep going, really. Like, my living room was a mess. We moved all our sofa this way. So we had a bit of floor. But we were lucky it was quite warm. So we could do it outside in the garden. But it did affect. It definitely did affect me. Um, and just like it did everyone else, no one could train um, like they normally do. But I was also lucky enough to be a class as um, an ex I have an exemption. 
after the lockdown eased um, and we could go back into training so I could do a little bit more training but still couldn't travel but I just kept thinking through the pandemic everyone's in the same position no one can do what we want to do so you just have to make most like make the most of the sessions that you could do at the time did you manage to do some sessions at home as well yeah obviously with um triathlon is hard because swimming is a big part of it yeah and we couldn't go to the pool at all for like ages yeah. and because I live so far away from lakes and beaches as well I couldn't travel to them so I think I struggled with that part because I missed like getting in the water and swimming yeah. but I did a uh, resistance training for like swimming with like weights and different things like that yeah. and obviously I ran I went up the mountains running and I got on my turbo so I was lucky with that really but. yeah so you could still so which is which is your strongest part I'd say the run at the moment is my yeah. yeah. Do you think that's because you was running a lot through lockdown and stuff like that? Yeah, I think so. And um, I've transitioned to my new coach and he's done wonders for me. Oh, wow. I, I just realised that so much different has happened. And I'm like, whoa, yeah, you're a really good coach. I'm going to stick <laughs> with you. You've helped me yeah, out. Here. Definitely. Yeah, that's good. But maybe that's a good thing for you because now you can focus a lot in the pool and stuff because you can go back in the pool. So now lockdown actually helped you with your running. To, yeah. Because I bet, so a lot in judo, you don't have much time to focus on certain things because you're always competing. So like when you come home, sometimes you want to practice some more technical stuff, but you're competing in two weeks. So you've got to focus on like, competition prep so um that was good for you I suppose because you really pushed in running so now you can take back and maybe push in swimming and stuff like that yeah definitely yeah I think um I need to up my sessions with swimming as well though because yeah. I mean I'm doing okay at the moment because I'm doing four sessions but yeah. I think that to move that further and move up now a level I'll have to add in more sessions and more hours yeah definitely mm -hmm. So with the competitions then, how did it feel to like compete in the Olympics with, with, with no like participate, uh, sorry, not participants, <laughs> spectators? So um, it was different, but I've competed in, I think, five events before the Olympics and they also had no spectators. So it wasn't a first thing going in with no spectators. And especially because the judo is the biggest sport in Japan as well. So it probably would have been like huge there. So before the pandemic, we expected a massive crowd. But um, ultimately, I think the main goal is just competing, isn't it? So you kind of, when you compete, you switch off from the crowd and the people around you and you just focus on competing. So it wasn't actually that bad. It was it was a change and it was um, not like normal, but it, it wasn't that bad, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I know a lot of people like were saying they was it was a bit different because obviously with the cheering and everything there was yeah. just nothing there. Yeah. But I think they just all got on with it really, and that's obviously what. Yeah, and also for for judo, in two thousand and nineteen, I was at in Japan for a competition, and the um, Japanese culture is so like polite and really nice. So they wasn't really big cheerers; they were more just like polite clappers and stuff like that. So it wasn't that much of a difference. Yeah, that's good. Um, so the school games then, because you obviously competed in it when you were younger. Yeah. Was it like, was it really fun? Yeah, it's yeah. So, it's it's the first event I did where there was not just judo people. Uh, well, I did it in athletics and so not judo, not just athletics people. Like there was all different sports. Like you can talk to people. You can just, it's just a really amazing experience. Like any games that I've ever been to is I went to the European games and that was just it's just nice to walk through like the where you're staying and stuff and just see different athletes and um when people are meddling and doing well or just enjoying the experience um you get like a good vibe from them so um it you'll really be happy when you're there and you, you'll be really determined to like compete and do good that's good yeah I was just like so I'm just so nervous, I think, for like going up there as well, because I just don't know what to expect, really. Like, yeah. I have a friend who's done it and she was telling me all about it. But then obviously, like, is your experience as well. So you don't know what you're going to get from it. Yeah, of course. But one thing for sure is you will have a lot of fun. Like it's it's a 
crazy experience but you will definitely have a lot of fun and I think that when you're enjoying yourself and having fun the competing parts are easy like it makes it more it makes it more easier to do definitely because you're just enjoying yourself then and you can just like just do it and just yeah. have fun yeah exactly exactly <laughs> So before big competition, how would you prepare yourself mentally and physically? So before I compete, um, I know in my head that I've trained the hardest I can train at that time. Um, I know I'm ready because I've trained hard. So when I go into competitions, I'm always confident. Like I know I've done everything I can. And when I'm actually competing, I know if I give it 100%, if I win or lose, I should be happy with myself because it's my 100% and I could, couldn't give it any more. So to deal with like the nerves and stuff going in, I just try to tell myself, just like I said, I've trained hard, like I deserve to be here. I've, I've been selected for this competition, which is huge, which you have been selected already. So you deserve a place at the competition. So you just need to tell yourself like, I'm here, I deserve to be here. So I'm going to go and compete and do what I love to do. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, what advice would you give to your 15 year old self now? I would say to myself, don't be so hard on myself. When I was 15, that's a junior category in judo. So um, I was just like you being selected for my first big events and stuff like that. And I didn't win all the events that I went to Um, sometimes I'd lose first fight or and I'd be disappointed with myself and I'd go home crying and I would really dwell on it for quite a long time and I think when I got home it would affect my training because instead of saying to myself right I didn't perform my best so I'm going to go home and try even harder in training work on the things that didn't go too well I would dwell on it a little bit and be upset with myself so looking back I would definitely tell myself and just to tell you now like if it doesn't go to plan and if you don't perform to the best that you know you can as long as you tried your hardest on that day that's all that you can do and you've still got so many years and so many more events to do like before you finish triathlon so it isn't the end of the world so just so literally just go and have some fun thank you so training then with your training how many hours do you do a week so well today was my first day back since the olympics i had one month off (laughs) and it was hard so normally we do three weight sessions per week which is about one to two hours And we do two to three conditioning sessions a week, which is one to two hours again. And then our randori sessions, which is our main sessions to do, which randori is sparring. So practice fighting. And we do it three to four times a week, which can last up to like two and a half hours sometimes. Um, So depending on competition and what competitions we've got coming up, we'll do like more power base or uh, more long endurance sessions. Um, so we do the three to four randori a week and then also technique so per day I'd say we do up to four hours um, roughly two sessions per day yeah how how often do you train um for swimming obviously I said I was on four sessions a week yeah and we really want to up them now but then um running I'm on three sessions a week yeah that would probably be about four hours because sometimes I go for the distance run and then the other ones are down my club with my coach yeah and then biking at the moment I don't do as much because they tell us basically to not really concentrate as much on the bike when you're young that comes when you're older because with like the swim obviously you want to concentrate on that to get out in the front pack and then on the bike then you can all like draft well if it's a draft legal race obviously but you can like work off each other and then pull each other along obviously and then the run then is depends on who's like the fastest then runner to like get to the end then so is that it goes swimming bike running Run. yeah and that's always the order yeah always but there is um there is like aquathons and duathlons as well we're we're doing an aquathon on thursday oh wow okay so, yeah and that is a swim and a run straight after one another okay and yeah. no bike at all no bike at all so oh. yeah so it's all it was all varied like our three days because 
the first day we're going to do two aquathons heats and finals okay. within the space of like 40 minutes rest so that's gonna oh. be fine <laughs> yeah and then um and then on the next day we're doing bike tests so we're going down to a race circuit and doing like figure of eight loops in a fast pace and then a 10k bike ride and then on the last day is a mixed team relay so our obviously welsh team yeah. will be competing against the other teams in a team relay relay of the full triathlon wow yeah if you can hear something it's my dog <laughs> um so that sounds interesting and so you've got a you're competing a lot you're doing a lot of racing yeah it's very busy on those two days wow. so i have to have lots of rest so you do a lot of like endurance training and long training yeah definitely i think well because the distance is quite long well yeah. yeah for us it is quite long because obviously we're young athletes yeah, for them wow. to like adults and olympic athletes they're like oh that's like nothing <laughs> but they've been there and they started yeah at that, definitely that race so yeah yeah what dog do you have i have a husky and do you know what she's really well behaved and it always seems to when i come on calls now she wants a toy box <laughs> no but yes yeah, so sometimes i go out running with her she's she's a really good training partner actually <laughs> so um yeah 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 i have i have three dogs oh what do you have two boxers and a chihuahua oh and boxers are really energetic aren't they they are definitely <laughs> <laughs> but i can't run with them because he's too fast for me <laughs> <laughs> they might like, get your pace um faster yeah. <laughs> um i think that's all the questions i really have okay yeah okay. so just before um how are you ready like have you done the training at home are you ready to compete yeah definitely I've um been down club sessions and doing all my training up in the hours yeah I've up my hours again now so I think I'm ready for it so you've um, done all the hard work at home now yes definitely <laughs> so okay. I'm just ready to go out there and just try my hardest and hopefully that'll be like really good anyway yeah so I bought for um your sport as well you can go off times and stuff so it's not necessarily about the um medals and winning you can go yeah. off times can't you to decide what's a good time and stuff for you yeah definitely because like in the end of the day it's all about you and like your yeah. race yeah. so like don't look at anyone else and think oh well they're like more better or whatever yeah you just concentrate on your times and you're like seek so i i look at my races and i see which times have improved so i'll, I'll know because some of them are the same distance the races so i'll look yeah. at that one a bit oh look i got a minute faster on this one so i'm improving yeah so that's how i like do my races and then when you go home you can say oh i was faster on this one but i was the same level this one so i can push harder now on yeah this. definitely and then i know like where to improve on as well because exactly. the areas as well we get split times yeah. so if my swim would be a bit slower then i know i have to work on my swim yeah uh, or vice versa with the run or the bike as well so going into it you know that it's not about other people or the competitors it's just about focusing on yourself and getting the best time that you can hopefully get yeah definitely perfect sounds good <laughs> And um, congratulations on getting to the Olympics, man, oh. that is amazing. <laughs> Thank you very much. Hopefully I'll be saying that to you in a few years time. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no problem.